Hey guys, how's it going? Kapern here. So it's been a little bit of time since uh, Little Hungry Dragon has been out. This is uh, one of the cards that was in the first batch of cards introduced for uh, Blackrock. You know, it was part of their big announcement for the expansion. And, you know, it seemed to be the most powerful. It was along cards like Grim Patron, which ended up being maybe a little better. Okay, a lot better. Um, but uh, nonetheless, people were really excited about Hungry Dragon because, you know, it was kind of like the introduction of dragons. And people looked at it like, wow, that's a really good card. I mean... Four mana, five, six. I've like never even seen that before. Well, you have, but okay. It's it it seems it seems really good. It seems to favor classes that uh, really uh, set up their win condition as playing a minion that your opponent can't immediately kill. Basically, priest. Uh, and a few of the other few of the other slow classes kind of make it work, and um, a few others make it work in a different way. Like Hungry Dragon uh, has some synergy with the Rogue class because a lot of the one drops tend to have one health, and if you have a weapon already active from a previous turn, it's kind of like playing a big dude and only investing a little bit for that one extra damage. So the card has underperformed big time. Let's just get that out there. But uh, it's not a bad card as far as arena. It's okay. As far as constructed, it's like, if you're really desperate for a dragon, you can put it in, I guess. But, yes, it suffers heavily from the dragon tax, because it's a dragon, uh, it's kind of a crappy card. Um, Hunger Dragon is, is pretty good in some cases, though. Uh, before we get into those cases, I want to show you guys just exactly what the battle cry means. So this, this was posted on Reddit about a month ago. Uh, it goes over all the options and kind of rates them. So about 40% are easy to deal with. Some of those have two health, so it's not necessarily easy, easy to deal with. But, you know, if you are like the rogue situation or if you have like a 1-1 one, one dude that you don't care about that you want to sacrifice, you know, it kind of dips into the medium situation. So about half the time... Uh, you can deal with whatever it's played very easily by just having a one damage thing on the board or some weapon that does that effect. The 40% of the time is just kind of harmless stuff. The medium stuff, it's a little bit more annoying. You can see things like Clockwork Gnome. Yeah, it's one health, but it's a mech. And it's actually been the case for me where my opponents played Hungry Dragon, given me the Clockwork Gnome, and then, oh man, I have a Goblin Blast Mage, and suddenly he just gave me lethal. And that's basically uh, one of the problems with this little guy. And it seems to be uh, more evident when you look at some of the hard creatures. So you have, uh, for instance, Flame Imp. Flame Imp is a 3-2, uh, which is basically a decent enough 2-drop, um, especially when... Uh, you can't really handle it when it gets to attack into you. That three attack, that's kind of a big deal. Um, also, when it gets to attack into you, uh, yeah, there's a few other ones. Um, we see on the list Dust Devil, Zombie Chow, North Shark Cleric, Shield Bear, Warbot Manorm, and Voidwalker. And, and some of those are, are fairly appropriately listed there. And then there's a two heart with the Warbot Infiltrator, Arden Squire, Dragon Egg Blood. I don't know if the two heart is really that difficult, but I know that. Forget about the list. But one third of the time, you get fucked, okay? So that's why basically this card is not really worth it. Um, the very notable cards, uh, you have to see Hungry Dragon, it's it's kind of like Pilot and Shredder, okay? There are some really cool options and there's some really devastating options. And it, it kind of shares that wild range because the one drops um, do have a very wild range. And let me explain it to you guys. So, you know, if you play Hungry Dragon in a situation where you can't really deal with whatever it spawns, basically, both players have nothing, you play Hungry Dragon. Often, you're going to do that because it's like, oh, I have five, six, whatever, man. Um, if you do that, it's basically Pit Lord. You're gonna play something, and that something's gonna hit you at least twice because your opponent's gonna hit you with the thing that you just gave him, and well, he's probably just gonna play his own four drop or something like that, or maybe deal with yours. And uh, that, that other creature might get an extra attack and might get two or three attacks, or you might just kill it, and it kind of sets up a situation where you have to invest quite heavily for that small amount of power boost on the five, six. I mean, it's four or five plus one plus one. But you have to, you have to invest basically more than a one, one on average to deal with you give your opponent. It's not like Pillar is very good. Actually, Pillar and Hungry Dragon, in terms of arena rankings, are basically exactly the same. Uh, and uh, funny enough, I don't think anybody, when, when looking at Hungry Dragon, really compared it directly to Pit Lord, and it kind of is very much that. Um, in, in Constructed, basically what happens is you play against people with annoying pieces of crap creatures that you're never going to get rid of, and you give them another one. 
Well, that extra feature is going to hit you a bunch of times until you die. Um, so it, it, it really shares that feature. It really is. It really is pit lord in a lot of situations. Would you play pit lord in constructed? Would you? No. There's better demons. Unfortunately, in some cases, for some decks, there are no better dragons that fit the deck. Um, in some other cases, people uh, can see Twilight Drake as a favorable option, but Twilight Drake also has that little kink in the card where, well, you play Twilight Drake, you spend your whole turn, you play a big creature, and then they have a silence, and you lose the game. So all the dragons that are 4-drop or even around there just have a lose-the-game clause, and um, Hunger Dragon does have the biggest one. In terms of the range, as I talked about, like with... with the wild range of one drops, you basically very unlikely to handle the full range of what will spawn. So with piloted treader, there are some rules like you put them in between two cards. To if he dies, maybe you get the totem. Um, you want to not attack into him if it may spawn a doomsayer, for instance. And if it may, you want to do that first. You can kind of prepare for that. Uh, but with hunger dragons, actually, maybe even more difficult because. Um, the two really wild options are Shield Bearer and Dust Devil, okay? So, if you want to play a Hunger Dragon on a turn and they have like a critical target, let's say they play like a Knife Juggler, if you play Hungry Dragon, you might just give them a Shield Bearer and then if you didn't kill the Knife Juggler first, well, you're screwed. But then what you can do is you kill the Knife Juggler with your options already on the board or your weapon or something like that, then play Hungry Dragon and then they get Dust Devil. So these are like such polar opposites and they just absolutely screw you that you can't really, you, there's no like medium, you know? You need, for you to play Hungry Dragon and feel like super safe, um, you need to be winning by a lot. So much so that Hungry Dragon, it doesn't even matter at all if it's actually a 5-6 or a 4-5. That's how much you need to be winning by to actually play the cards safely. And in Constructed, well, they're just better cards. In Arena, sometimes you gotta take risks. Sometimes you gotta take risks to win games. But taking a risk on turn four to win a game is really crap. Um, so I actually feel while the card is rated similarly to Pit Lord in terms of Arena, I think it's actually worse than Pit Lord. And Pit, Pit Lord's not a bad card. Hunger Dragon's not a bad card. But it's pretty close. It's It's... In my opinion, not above average. In my opinion, I'd rather have a Chilwin Yeti than a Hunger Dragon in Arena for that fact. And, um, well, okay, Hunger Dragon might have some positive notes. It's just they're a bit difficult to set up. So originally when I looked at the card, uh, I thought it was really cool because uh, as I've tried in the past with Leroy, uh, I've tried to make uh, MC Tech force the fourth creature on my opponent to, to spawn the super combo MC Tech. And I thought with Hungry Dragon, I could do the same. I could do like a turn seven Hungry Dragon MC Tech. Well, it hasn't happened yet in Arena. It hasn't happened against me in Arena. And while well, in Constructed, it turns out by turn seven, if you're running stupid cards like that, um, yeah, you're dead already. Uh, and then you might just get the piece of crap that you gave him. So it, it, just, it just doesn't work. It, the, the game in Constructed is too fast. It's too combo-y. The game in Arena requires consistency. Like... You know, Hunger Dragon is probably just going to lose you game like one out of three, one out of four times that you play it. That's terrible. That's like Death Lord level, you know? That's, that's in my opinion, if you want to be a really consistent arena player, that's something you very seriously need to consider because while a 55% win rate in Constructed might be fantastic, a 55% win rate in arena is garbage. And cards like these, cards like Death Lord, really push you to that medium level where it's really good sometimes but game losing in others. Um, the, the, the saving point, you have the MC Tech, I suppose. The other saving point, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like the Doomsayer effect with a piloted Shredder. It's like, okay, well, I'm screwed, I guess. I guess I'll kill this Shredder or kill my Shredder, try to get a Doomsayer and see what happens. And, and Hunger Dragon has that little clause with the Zombie Chow. If you play H Hunger Dragon and you give your opponent a Zombie Chow, sometimes that will be a disaster. But if you're going to win a game against you know someone who's just really trying to rush you down, those few extra hit points might actually cause you to end up winning the game. So, you know, if, if you're losing and you're holding Hungry Dragon, if you're going to take anything from this video other than Hungry Dragon's really kind of crappy, it's that there there is maybe some way out. Play that Hungry Dragon, maybe you give him a zombie chow, maybe you snag up that 5 HP and steal the game. In terms of just big dudes on the 4 mana curve, we've seen a few released. 
Um, and it's really the, the only thing that's come like as a clear benefit is for good old Pilot Sky Golem. Pilot Sky Golem now has two really good 5-6 creature options. Uh, it also has uh, another card that, in my opinion, is very similar but considerably better than Hungry Dragon. The new little dude, the Fire Guard Destroyer, very similar to Wild Metal. It's, it's basically like on four mana, you play six health worth of enough attack and it's going to kill at least two two drops. That's that's the rule. Hungry Dragon, Hungry Dragon doesn't even do that a lot of the time. It often ends up dying to like a three drop plus like a bad coin flip on the battle cry. So Hungry Dragon's kind of the worst of the better than Chilwin Yeti in terms of stat four drops. But it's still that. It's kind of there. I think if I really had to make constructed dragon decks, I'd still rather take the risk and run Twilight Drake personally. But I know some of you guys have done uh, the Hungry Dragon way, and uh, good luck to you guys. I don't know. It's kind of one of those cards that was a bit of a disappointment. Um, the main the main mistake that I had, maybe mistake that a lot of people had in evaluating the card is just, you know, the, the meta game wasn't going to change. People are going to play really annoying, really fast, really death rattly decks, and adding to that, giving another piece of crap that you need to remove for your opponent is just too big of a price to pay. So that's where Hungry Dragon is, but uh, I got some fun clips for you guys to illustrate that fact and maybe show you guys some of the better uses or catastrophic uses of the card, because, uh, well, it's fun to see. Anyway guys, hope you guys enjoyed my review, check out the clips, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, we got a bunch of fast dudes. Okay, we lose. That was fun. I'm not really joking either. Because we have no power cards, we have no way to come back from shitty situations. This is a shitty situation. If that was his best answer on three mana, we should be fine. The light compels you. No attack, also pretty bad. Let's go for a kill on that. Kill the totem. Okay. We're fine now. I don't understand why you just didn't play the taunt creature last turn. Orb Crackle. Wow, it gets lucky. Fifty-fifty isn't lucky. Well, if you win the fifty-fifty and it means winning the game, it's kind of lucky. Don't you think so? Winning the game is pretty lucky. We must cleanse the sun well. Play those two. What the fuck is he doing? No heal, no heal. Okay, taunt's bad, but could have been worse. Let's play the dragon next turn. 
If we play this dragon and he gets like a fucking Wind Fury Dust Devil crap, we're actually gonna lose the game and that would be a really dumb way to lose. Oh my god, he got it. <sighs> Fuck. I guess I misplayed it. Should have waited on the attack. It, I don't know. What? This is such a shitty situation. Like, none of these cards work. I think the best I could do is this. Actually, let's play this with the dragon. Actually, no, let's just play the dragon. Let's see what comes out. Perfect. Shadow or Death kind of counters this a bit. I'd still be left with a 1 1 though, I think. Oh, fuck. We must cleanse the sun well. Holy Nova wrecks me here. I know that when I explain the reasons why I was banned and how shitty a game was, uh, I probably make a few mistakes because it's been like three years in some cases. Um, but I'm not, I'm not like trying to exaggerate or anything. Like, there's videos on every one of these subjects that you guys can just go see, like the Guild Wars one. This is really shitty though. I'm just drawing really bad cards against this guy, like nothing seems to fit. I want to attempt to play all three of those in the same turn. I think that might be possible. Yeah, yeah, you've got to be kidding me! That was a misplay. Am I dead if it misses? 17 now. How good it didn't miss. I'm pretty fucked against uh, mind control. I just don't have removal for big creatures. Shadow Flame would have been really sick. I picked uh, this over Shadow Flame. If I had Shadow Flame in this spot, I'd probably just win. Okay. Light Bomb. And a Yeti. Wow. That was certainly aggressive. I don't really want to go to four life. And I wouldn't want to play anything that costs three mana anyway. So we don't want to tap here. Ooh, that's a nasty draw. I 
I got a much better draw, but I'm in much worse shape right now, so. saw that. Okay. I have lethal as is. Playing this could only result in a disaster that's MC Tech, which is probably what that card is, by the way. Oh no, I don't have lethal anyway. I'm one off. Let me change oh, fuck. Your mind. Oh, close. The light does not disturb. You can't be that bad now. Zeus GG, look who's in chat. Your magic shall not save. Yeah. But we won anyway. That was a really close game though. Tappy tappy. Nah. You cannot go to one life against the priest. Can't tap. <laughs> 